Yeah. I, I actually kind of snuck ahead of you guys before I put the sugar in. So you guys can see how many sugar I had. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's definitely, uh, you're, you're already, I don't think really, I think you can go without the coffee when I come here in the daytime. It's just like, you know, it's exciting. It's every day, it's like the novelty doesn't wear off, right? You feel, yeah, you just feel so, uh, the reward of doing what you're doing is to give it back, right? It's so great. Such a good feeling. Coffee doesn't give you that feeling. And this is my humble, humble little room here. This is where I, I plug in the stats to the, uh, for the uh, program and stuff like that. That's just basically what we gave out. The age, the race, the whether it's a female or a male, and the D, what we call a DOC is a, just the drug of choice of that person. And that way we can sit there and know where our funding should be going. <laughs> 40 bags of 10 needles each with swabs in our don't share card, and, uh, which is right here. And what's that? That's our dump yeah, share so card, the, uh, so that people don't stage. share their equipment. So that's the front, and on the back of it is our office number, our outreach number, and our toll-free number. So anyone in anywhere in the province can call us uh, for the church. Actually, it's um, peer navigation program is, is P, we call it PWUD. It stands for people who use drugs. So what we try to do is is uh, is, is show people that they have a purpose you know, uh, give, them, give them a job where they think otherwise they can't, you know, even do a job. No one's going to hire them or whatever, but show them that they, they matter and what they, you know, what they can do also can help people soon. That's what we do right there. How's it going, dude? Hey, what's up, man? Got the camera in your face already. Yeah, hey, <laughs> I was like, see, it's you, man. Yeah. Okay, here, you see what you're like to sit. Um, get some uh, STEM kits prepared, right? You don't want to go without having these done. These are just our screen kits and stuff that go inside of the stems so for when they smoke crack and stuff. So just checking on it, make sure that we got enough cookers. These are our stirry cups, we call them cookers. Cookers, what do you um, prepare your, uh, you know, your, whether it's cocaine, uh, any kind of opiate medication pills and stuff, you break them down and you cook it up inside one of these. It's just sterile, it's like instead of using a spoon. A lot of people like using spoons and stuff like that. So it's a lot more sterile where we're harm reduction. We just like, we do what we can do, right? Right. Okay, guys. Uh, you guys have a good shift? Yeah. Okay, All right. see us. Okay, we'll see when we get back. Mainline staff, including myself, are people with lived experience, and it is with this wealth of lived experience that we have been able to keep Mainline strong for over 26 years. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to work in this inspiring and life-saving program and with these amazing people. I'm happy to present this documentary, which clearly demonstrates the heart of what we do at Mainline, and I will let them tell our story. Mainline is a non-profit needle exchange in Halifax. They are a project of the Mi'kmaq Native Friendship Centre. It was started 26 years ago, and Diane Bailey, its longest standing member, has been there since the start. Mainline's goal is harm reduction through providing clean supplies and proper education for people who use drugs. They have a full staff of past users who bring knowledge of their backgrounds to help them do what they do. The Peer Navigator Project is, is giving, it was just like a project, it was a pilot project. Peer Navigator Program is PWUD, are the letters that is used for what the PWUD stands for, is people who use drugs. Well, why would you want to hire people who use drugs? Well, first of all, what do we do? What, what should we expect going out today? Well, you probably get beat up. No, no, no you're going you're gonna to walk down Gladysen Street. There's going to be no jaywalking. Now, sometimes when I'm out, I'll cut up around St. Pat's School. I know it's a hot spot, could be a needle out, it's kiddie time, kids are out playing. 
I'd feel bad if it's stuck in someone's hand. So we're going to go down what they call the Met Lane. It used to be uh, one of the schools that you know I used to go to when I was younger. But basically, this is our stuff. We normally just go down there, do a, a, a brief needle search, and along the way, you'll notice these guys are just going to be keeping their eyes peeled for needles on as we're going. Especially this this place. This is a rooming house. Watch your step coming down through here. A lot of ice and stuff, little patches and things. So, I used to use in this building when I was active. I used to use in this spot. Yeah, me just too. Just right in along the side. Yeah. yeah. I don't know too many of us around here that didn't. The people who we were trying to the, the target, you know, a uh, person who we would want as a peer navigator would be the person who was having a hard time and struggling, trying, but, you know, struggling just the same and, and, and are actively using. And the reason for that is because we would want someone to sit there and, you know, lift their self-esteem up, you know, put some, put some hope back into their life and, you know, just, just lift them up. And, and it just went hand in hand with everything because it's like what, what was given to me. And so what that is, is a chance. There's one, two, three. Pipe right there, I can see. Crack pipe, yeah, and there's, there's a needle under it. Underneath the crack there's pipe. six needles in there, remember? I yeah, showed Ben. Right That's right, yeah. Needle searches, we do, we do daily needle searches, daily. So we would go to what we call a hot spot where people would be using yeah. and disposing. Like when, you know, when we're in active addiction, some people just leave their paraphernalia behind. This is, this is where our uh, homegirl was found too, man. Yeah, a good friend of ours was found uh, down here in this, uh, this area here. I come by every now. Now and then when I come down here, I say a prayer just silently to myself. She was a person, you know, she had, she was a mother, you know, she was a sister, uh, a niece, an aunt, uh, a friend, and just dumped there, just like, you know, she wasn't killed there or anything like that, but it was like, you know, it's where they dumped her. And uh, this is one of the places where people, you know, like I say, use, so it's such a, such a cold place. God bless her soul. She was a great person, man. She was a great person. This is utmost respect to her because she was my friend, and and I miss her very much. Is uh, a reason to continue to sit there and do to do what we do, right? You know, to keep on keeping on because there's people like that out there that deserve much better than you know ended up. What's up, fam? All right, love. Respect, great man. Great. So what it is, is it basically, it lifts you up, right? It lifts you up from, and you know, helps you with your self-esteem. You, you, you're doing things that matter. Chris puts his heart into it. So does Corey. But, but Chris knows a lot of people in the North End. That has an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Giving back, that's what I get to do. And, all the glory goes to God, and I'm, and I'm great with that, man. I'm great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just wants to be on camera. Uh, what's up, Sean? Okay, well, I'm a hugger, and I like to tell people that I love them, and I like to just, you know, and it just, sometimes maybe they don't hear that from other places, right? You following us, Rob? <laughs> right, buddy. You take care, man. You have a great day, okay, Rob? So, so you know, I like to do that just to keep it out, keep the positivity and everything, right? Where, where is your family originally from? Well, the valley, the Ber valley. Berwick area. Dad yeah. was from Kentville. Gotcha. Yeah. Peer navigation is a pilot project Mainline is trying out. It includes one staff and one client, known as a peer. Their goal is to get out in the community and form new connections, to stay in touch with what's going on. It also gives their clients an opportunity to help out and get paid for their time. <laughs> I was smiling. I was smiling. <laughs> you just okay. wanted me to show more tea. Now I go out on Mondays and I have a peer who is somebody who's still actively using drugs. During the three hours we're out, they cannot use drugs. They can use before, they can use after, but not during those three hours. Watch your step there. Yeah. Don't want to trip over there. 
You're going to go over for the gate? Uh, let's see if we can cross. Okay. So it gives them a reason to get up that morning and get in there and they go out. I've never heard anyone have a negative time uh, uh, of going out for those three hours. In this job, it keeps me, like, honest. I see what's out there and I don't want that kind of life anymore, right? I want to make changes. And during these three hours, I'm talking to the peer, telling them maybe a little bit about myself. They're sharing their story with me. So not only is it beneficial for them, beneficial for me. Yeah, yeah I started the volunteer work and that's where things started. When I started giving back to the society from, from taking from them for so many years, I started feeling like I had a purpose that I didn't feel I had for so many years and the drugs were filling a void. And that void was loneliness. And now that I do volunteer work and I do this as well, it gets me out. When I go home now, I'm happy to go home and lay my head in my bed, yeah. go to sleep. And you gotta have a purpose. You gotta have a reason to, to get, get out of bed. Yeah. If people who are judgmental against people who use drugs. If they could hear some of these stories, it might change their outlook. I'm HIV positive. People had, didn't even want anything to do with me because of the stigma attached to it. It's the same with people who are addicted to drugs. I never even did a pain pill in my life when I first shot one. I never, I didn't even know what it was. And buddy come out and shoot me with it and it never stopped. That was five years ago, I'm only 23. <laughs> I just spent three years in prison. Four, I only lasted three months when I started shooting up. And I spent three years in there trying to rob the pharmacy because I couldn't handle it no more. And I just finished the, almost a year ago now. It's been over a while now. <laughs> Mainline did really good for me. And they're doing the same thing again. They're always very nice people. Always hooking me up with food. <laughs> doing good things. Yeah, I like it anyway. I think it's a very good thing. And it's all people that have experienced it. That know what's, what the struggle was. Not people that just think they know, right? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's all right, though. The guy that did the interview, he's in, was he was he new or was he a return? He's a return. He's a return, okay. We have keep stats on whether, how many new people that we can connect with as well as the people who are what we consider to be regulars. We have different lists for them. They're not a staff, so they don't get a pay. They get an honorarium for the three hours that they are out there with us. Whether they're using drugs or not, just as valuable as my time. We have backpacks with supplies in it. We have a sharps container that we do needle searches. You know, water holes, what do you call it? Drainage. Um, drainage, drainage holes, so I, I check them, because sometimes somebody will put a needle in inside there. You know, picking up needles or other paraphernalia that may be lying around, and then, you know what, maybe it'll click into their head that maybe, hey, you know what, I'm not going to throw that cup down there again. I'm not going to throw this down there because I, I see now what it does, where what happens. We do more than just give out harm reduction supplies. We help people with housing. We help people with, you know, getting IDs. We help people uh, who need medical assistance with uh, Mo MOSH, which is uh, Mobile Outreach Street Help. If somebody walked through our door and needed help with something, if we couldn't do it there, we'd find an organization that would. Uh, Mainline, they're great. They do, uh, they do health referrals. They can help you get all your identifications, um, anything along the lines of prescriptions, methadone, education. Um, they're, they're like the, the core for this whole city as far as people that are looking for help or assistance reaching out to other resources. They're the A before the B and the C kind of thing, right? Can you get the sign above or get that first and then pan, that pan down to me? I want the Salvation Army in it and I would like to have Mainline. Working with the Mainline for the last 30 years, I helped me with uh, financial stuff, whereas I didn't have a phone and I was scared I might take a stroke or heart attack and maybe die and I didn't have a phone, so 
uh, main line got me a phone. That's a nice phone. John, this guy, like here, man, you wouldn't believe it, man. This guy's a really good friend of mine, and the same with the rest of them. But a lot of people have addictions because people being beaten around as a kid and stuff like that. And I got abused a couple times as a kid, you know? Great. Spend most of my life in prison. I couldn't get the money anywhere else, so I did what I had to do to get the money. But I've changed, definitely changed. Now, if you were by yourself, I don't know you, yeah. I wouldn't have done this. But him, yes. Is that all you need us in the side? If you need anything else, man, I'm there. Everybody at Mainline has a story. They all have a past history of drug use, which they use as a way to connect and empathize with their clients. Unless you were really there, it is truly hard to understand the impact drugs can play on a person's life. This is what makes Mainline different from other organizations. That's right, yeah. Get high very quick, very quick. Just stopping on the way, that's right. I remember when I used to use back in the day and I was smoking crack, I would load my, my crack pipe, already load it, so that when I was walking, I would have it in my hand at all times in my pocket. And when I would want to sit there and do a blast or whatever, I would just duck into one of the cubbies and do the blast right there. I know it's really noisy down here with these trucks and stuff like that. I got what they call chron chronic facial pain. I have chronic sinusitis, and I have chronic migraines. Never been shot in the head, but if I could describe what being shot in the head was like, that's what it'd be like. How I got addicted was by going to the hospital, this is a young boy, going to the hospital and getting injections of Demerol that I knew nothing about, knew nothing about what, a, what an opiate even was. Just watch you guys' steps as well because we want to sure foot ourselves because of the simple fact of it is there might be needles in the, in the grass still. The doctor come in, he's like, well, we can't give you that injection of what we were giving you. This is years later um, because it's a very addictive medication, Mr. Clayton, and you can become addicted. Too late. I was already addicted. And so I used to go out and I used to seek the Demerol, which is so hard to get on the streets because that wasn't one of the things that people who did had addictions, they just wasn't what they did. I used to hear people say they didn't like it. Yeah, I got high down here a few times. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sitting down here with a bag of dope in my pocket and a bottle of pills, a couple thousand dollars in my pocket. You can get away with it a thousand times, but you only need, it only takes once to get caught, right? When you would get caught, it's just like everything stops, everything slows down, it's slow motion, bro, from that point on. To me, it seems like it's in the, either the nicest sunny day or it's always the evening and the lights and the dark and you're in the back of the uh, cop car and all you're seeing is people that you know out of the windows. I'd rather go knock on the door of a federal penitentiary and say, let me in directly than to sit there and go through the police station and being locked up just even overnight down there. is one of the things that I learned is that if I'm going to do that time and survive doing that time and come out and still be myself and be able to sit there and come out and function in society, then I'd had to forget. I'd drive myself crazy if I sit there and could sit there and think about the outside. 2002. 2002 was the last. It was my last, it was my last, yeah, prison stint. The last time I was actually in prison was um, sometime after that and it was through Mainline. Yeah. Because what it was, I got a job working that main line, and I we were doing a work fair there. Yeah, right? right there, Bathrobes, comforters. same with up here. Look, Chris. Whoa. Nice one. Be safe with that. Check that needle in. They say two heads are better than one, four eyes are better than two, six is better than four. Right? And so on and so on. And so on and so on. And more hand makes like where? 
That's right. After I had got myself into a, a spot where I was, you know, doing better on the outside, you know, and um, things started to change in my life. I had uh, time, uh, idle hands, boredom. These things are things that will just end me up back to using. I used to go to Mainline as a client. So going there and I, got, I knew what they would do for me this as an addict and what they would do for other people as an addict. I prayed for it to work at Mainline doing what they done. How good would that be? It's down the street. I love the people there. This is exactly what I want to do. I'm at the house and I, I, hear, I hear the phone rings. Pick up the phone, not thinking nothing of it. There's a voice on the other end of the phone. It says to me, hi, it's Diane from Mainline. She said, I was just wondering if you would like to work for us and be part of the team. I was like, is this real? Like, really, is it real? Because it was like, that never really had anything happen to me like that. And feeling that moment. Well, I'm feeling it right now too, bro. So. Yeah. Let's still try though. I think I can get it now. Surgery. Success, success. Okay, so there's another one down. Right there, she done the world for me right there. But when I sit there and thank her for that, she says, Chris, you, no, no, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, I didn't do, I didn't do that. Like, all I did is I gave you an opportunity, and you took the opportunity, and you did it. I was just so, like, grateful, and, and <laughs> I was high as I ever been on any drug, <laughs> you know, for real, right? Like, it's like this of mine is a trip, right? Oh, just her name back in the day. This is where I used to be, now I'm not there. I'm somewhere else now. I'm glad I'm done, done that, though. That's right. I can say that for sure. Yeah. I got your back on that. That makes dittos for us. I can, I can only tell you, I already told you something, is this that all angels don't have wings. She has some sort of connection to something. Mainline does a program called Outreach. Staff drive to the various communities around Halifax and deliver clean supplies to client stores. They do this every day. They want to make sure the clients get what they need. So if they miss them, they will return and get them later that week. <laughs> good day, good day. Another one down. It's all good. Hey, John. All right. Yes, Kayla, I'll call you with your next uh, shifts, all right? For the, for, for month March. Yeah, for sure. Much, yeah, like when you guys first came, it was like, whew, you're probably overwhelmed with everybody that's coming in and out and, you know, seeing our big buckets full of needles. Every morning, like, uh, when the um, outreach has finished up their shift during the evening and they bring their the dirty syringes into the office, they usually put them right here, so... In the morning, I'd come in and I'd check it out. So we got a couple of bu uh, a bucket here with syringes in it. It's not quite not quite full. That bucket, once it is full, will hold about 1,600 needles. I, there's skills I have that I can uh, put out there. Uh, my coworker Carrie has skills that she uses, and our director Diane. We all come from different backgrounds. I mean, in order to work at Mainline, you have to be clean. You can be on methadone because this is a treatment, but other than that, you have to be clean in order to work at Mainline. All right. So once the bucket is full and I've sealed it, then I take it out back and um, I'll show you where we put it. So of course we keep the door locked because our supplies are in here and also a lot of dirty needles. So these are our buckets. Once they're all full, they're sealed and we put them here. Every six weeks we call Stir Recycle and they come and uh, pick up these supplies and bring us the new buckets. My other co-workers, they usually do the outreach. So that's either central within the city or provincially. We all pitch in, we all help fill the van, get the van together, load the van, and then they're off. Enough buckets? Yeah, one, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, Check the small six, ones. Three, six, seven, seven plus full ones. Seven big ones? Central Outreach is, is quite large. There's no way we could serve HRM in one night. 
So we start Monday. Monday we're in North End Halifax. We're in Fairview and Spryfield and Sackville. People live there, right there. They live, People that's live. their house. Where? Yeah, right on the step. Then they got kicked out of there and they moved over here to this spot where they made a house. I was 25 when I got married. I married an older man with money. I got in a car accident. Uh, I wasn't even really hurt. It was insurance. It was a money thing, you know. They give me it was called Percocet. And I had them, I would say, for about three months. And then I started getting sick. And then the money was there. And then we knew people that knew people that knew people. And that's how I got. Paula's who, sorry? Paula is a very interesting lady. I was actually in detox with Paula because when I got pregnant with my youngest daughter, I had to get clean. I didn't have to, but you know, I didn't want to have a drug addicted baby. And I met Paula there. I tried banging needles, I tried smoking crack, but that's how I ended up getting hooked on the opiates. And then life just started going downhill after that. I was like, I could never get enough. They made me feel like I was a million dollars. Like, I could speak, I could talk, I wasn't scared of nothing. It just made me feel so much better. When I was in my active addiction, there was no place where we could go to get clean needles or, you know, whatever your drug choice was. I, I feel really good when, you know, we go to clients and, you know, they'll take the clean stuff. It's about Got them counted? You want to take a look inside? Yeah. Counted. <laughs> and what was you like, darling? I need a sleeve. No, I said I shouldn't. Hey. Oh. That's my cat. Your cat is a scary cat. <laughs> a cat wood. When I went to get clean, um, like I said, it was on maybe three years. That's all I was an addict for, basically three years. The wait list for methadone down home was 10 months. I called up here. I got to put my name on the list up here and I get in within three months. I'm telling you, I don't know where anybody would be without them. They deserve a medal for sure. No, seriously, because they're there for us when a lot of the other medical community isn't. 902, honey. Wait. OK, 902. Hi, yes. Suzette, how are you? Who's this? It's Margo. I have a camera crew with me. He might say, how, how did you meet Mainline or something like that. OK, yeah. Yep. Just That's a couple it. of questions, right. nothing big. OK. And I picked you myself, so. All right, so where are you at? I'm right around the corner to <laughs> puff up your hair. OK. OK, bye. There you go. Mm -hmm. This is the right place, right, Heather? Jame and Suzette. Yeah. Yep. Didn't know my way around here, didn't know nothing. Just shuttle right to Dartmouth Detox. And that's that's the scary part when you don't know your way around, you don't know nothing. When you come from a small little place, you hear oh, Halifax, Cottagen Street, holy fuck, you know, right? I'm just gonna let her know we're here, we're out back. Yeah. yeah, I moved up here and never looked back. And then when I had the opportunity to work with Mainline, that, that made my life a whole lot better. It's not, no, it's, it's, it's not, not a TV station, it's, it's a, a documentary on Mainline. Yeah. As far as Margo, I knew her like forever. <laughs> She's a sweetie. What I think is that I think they need two places. That place really isn't big enough. They should have one in Halifax and yeah. one in Dirt. Really, right? And people, I think, need to um, sit down, get on the internet, and take a look at some of these people. You know what I mean? Seriously, even with the opiate addiction and stuff, oh, you don't even understand what it's like to get sick. It's worse than anything you want. You want to die, right? But they don't stop and think of the struggle the person went through to get off, you know? Because when you take something like that, a doctor prescribes it, but they forget to tell you, here's the side of it. Provincial outreach is similar to their central. The difference is the people served. They get more supplies because Mainline doesn't go as often. They also distribute their needles to local pharmacies in these rural areas to try and get their name out there. 
Ainline hopes to be in these communities on a more regular basis with better funding in the future. It's so quiet, it's been so, we've never yeah. been so quiet. So how far away are we, Carrie? How far away, probably about, what exit were we at, seven? Uh, so we're going to exit nine. Oh, okay, we're yeah. close then. Yeah. Nice. Where are you guys going today, what's going on? doing mainline outreach. We just deliver um, harm reduction supplies. I make the call the day before just to remind everybody that we're going to be in the area so that they have a better chance of seeing us. When you're talking to counselors or whoever, they really don't get it, the, how desperate you are, right? And what it feels like to live that way. So when you're, when you have somebody that's been there willing to help you it's just, it just makes it, I think it just um, makes our connection a little bit stronger. It shows them too that if I can do it, if Carrie can do it, <laughs> I think anybody can do it, right? My drug of choice was crack, crack cocaine. I, I came into a pile of money. My mother died a millionaire. I'm also a survivor from the Nova Scotia Home for Colored Children. I got a big settlement there. So lots of money to the point where I thought I was some kind of big drug import, export. I was so, I, I feared no one. I, I really thought I was untouchable because of the money I had. So I went through about $420,000 in crack cocaine. Now Marco's scared you're going to get bit by dog. Oh, they'll say, look at, look at that, that's dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, when I got clean less than two years ago, I was about 115 pounds. Um, I'd lost my daughter. Um, my oldest daughter was uh, an IV drug user. I'd lost my mother. My father was gone. It was, it's like, a, you know, everything was gone. And, uh, you know, when they took my baby, uh, you know, I said, I'm going to get you back. And the, the tough thing about addiction is, it overpowers love. If it was up to, you know, if it was between addiction and love, if love kept her with me, she would have never left. But that's not the way it works. When the social workers came in, there was rocks of crack cocaine on the coffee table. I don't think she was apprehended, she was rescued. My lawyer said, Margo, here's the deal. You stay clean from here on in, and you go to every visit. And I did it, I did it. One night my partner came home with uh, five grams of good cocaine. And I looked at my daughter's picture on the fridge. I knew he was upstairs smoking crack. And I said, if you touch that, it's over. You might as well take her and just crumple that picture right up. And I was clean ever since. Here we go. Not this one, the next one. Right here. Well, I can't control the road, no, girls. Know. It was it was a rough go. It shook the fuck out of me. It shook me so hard <laughs> that I, I I don't think that uh, you know that's not a that's not a decision I'm going to make today when I leave here. I'll tell you that. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? No reach. I think people, as soon as they hear mainline needle exchange, they hear needle, and their mind literally narrows. And we're so much more than a needle exchange. I mean, I could spend two hours just here now telling you everything we do other than 
exchange needles. Whatever the clients need assistance with, that's what we do. We're a real small group. You, we're close. We know our cats, our children, that kind of stuff. We're, we're very close. Okay, left. Your other left. And my other left. I always do this once. <laughs> it's a very rewarding job. At the end of the day, you go home and you put your head on your pillow and you know you did a good job and you helped somebody. Okay. Yeah. These are our safer use kits. Screens, a mouthpiece, and the glass. We don't want to burn our lips. They crack open, blood. This is Vitsy that breaks crack down so it can be injected. Needles that are 28 and a half gauge, we give out a, quite a large variety of gauges. Okay, so these are three mil barrels. They come in a case of 800, but each separate box holds 200. And then there's a case of these tips that go with it, and there's a thousand in this case. So depending on how, how often we're gonna be there, um, they could take two cases of these and two cases of barrels. If I, I don't know how much you guys have, but if I could get two buckets, if you have enough, yeah. if that will last your trip. Um, anything else that As much or? vitamin C as you can spare. Okay. All right, let's get this there. Okay, so swab first, you know that. Uh, <laughs> I have to like tell that. you. <laughs> and then dab after? Yeah, I know. No, I'm, I'm, I'm well aware. I probably have enough alcohol in my blood. <laughs> Joking. If you guys do like from from basically what Peggy's Cove to here, that total area, or you do everywhere no, between. We do. We do everywhere, but the South Shore run can go as far down to Liverpool. So you guys are do like 16-hour days sometimes. Sometimes, so. yeah. But we're starting to leave our supplies at pharmacies in those rural areas as well. So um, you know, people who who are using and who uh, don't have access to. Uh, downtown sites like, you know, in Halifax. Um, they can go into these pharmacies and get a clean needle if they need to. As much as people tell them, hey, they're cool, I've been uh, getting supplies from them for years, they still, they're closet users, right? So they don't want anybody knowing that they're using. So a lot of people prefer to just still buy them from the drugstore. I got uh, addicted to the opioids because I have Crohn's disease. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at 16. I am 35 now, so I've lived with this half my life. I was diagnosed at such a young age, uh, the doctor was just throwing every opioid at me. Uh, I've been on Percocets, Tunnel 3s, Oxycontins, uh, Hydromorphones. I was also transitioning um, from female to male. So a lot of mental health going on there, dysphoria. Yeah, like if you run out or running low, you can just call right. them, we'll send it up by mail. Okay. If we're not coming up. Regularly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you later. I took a year off uh, after school to sort of focus on my health. That was a plan, but I didn't do that. I went and partied and got into the party drugs. So your coke and your crack and your speed and your Ritalin, anything you could snort. That made me feel alive because I was so drugged down by the Crohn's and the opioids. Um, I needed an upper. Yeah, we're just waiting to see her. Her phone number as well. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. I had a heart attack at 30 uh, due to my Crohn's being so malnutritioned. And then I had what they call an interscope of your, of your bowels. So basically my bowels just went inside of each other. So I had to have emergency surgery. When the doctor said, uh, we, we don't know if you're going to come out of this. Diane visited me in, in the hospital. Diane being my landlord at the time, asked how I was, and I just 
started crying because I was scared, not sure where my life was going at this point. And if I did make it to the hospital, what, what am I gonna do? What's out there for me? I was in constant pain, which therefore I couldn't heal. So she went and talked to the necessary people and within a few hours, I was on a dilated drip. And a week later, I was home. I went through a really uh, bad breakup, long, long-term breakup of eight years. And uh, I went down to Diane and I had told her, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. And uh, she said, why don't you just come down to Mainline uh, tomorrow and I've got a couple things for you to do. Get your mind off things. And I was like, okay, whatever, sure. I went down, ended up painting the whole office. During that whole time, I got to meet the clients. I realized I fit in with the clients. I felt comfortable. Uh, with anybody that walked through the door. I felt comfortable with anybody that worked there. I guess Diane saw that as well, and she offered me a job two months later uh, with Mainline, and I've never looked back since. Mainline partners with Mosh two times a week. Mosh is mobile outreach street health. It involves a nurse and a staff and they go out and facilitate any clients that cannot make it to a hospital or other healthcare facility. They work round the clock to make sure that clients have the information they need to get to where they're going. I did have to run already with the backpacker. So now I'm just waiting for the nurse to come. It could be a busy day, but uh, when people are getting blood work, they don't always, you know, they ask for it and they need it done, but they're not always available. This is the supplies we're taking today, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's in the office. Okay, yeah, just pull it around now, and I'll then I'll move the van later, like. Okay. Five-hour shift. It, it, it could take longer, right? And then we usually save blood work for the end of the evening because we have to get it back to the lab within a certain amount of time. So I have a couple of things for our list today. We have to drop these off at Uniac Square. OK. Right. And then these are the two, this address I want to go to today. I'm just checking in on per this person for the uh, first where time. Where are they at? Almond. Mosh is Mobile Outreach Street Health. Mosh is different from a medical clinic in that they go to the patients. Some patients won't go to a hospital or even a doctor or that, so they can get medical service right in the van that otherwise they may not receive, which could um, complicate their issues, resulting in a hospital stay. So we're heading to do a client's blood work. Helen from Marsh is uh, going to do his blood work. He's got a blood rack from his doctor. And uh, we'll do his blood work and take it to the lab and the results will come back to his doctor. They don't have to pay for the service, but some of them are on community services. They don't have to travel to get the blood work done. So it makes it basically accessible to them where otherwise it probably wouldn't be accessible. You camera shy? No. <laughs> camera happy? All right. Awesome. How are things going with you? That's pretty well. Yeah. So you got into the dock. I think we saw you two weeks ago. Yeah. And they got you in pretty quickly, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I was up there on time. Yeah. Let's put this under here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Any difficulties with left work ever? No. No. Perfect. Yeah, that happened. I feel a pinch. Are you making it, Romy? That's a great gaming. Is she getting the blood, or do I need to punch you in the nose? Okay. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah. I'll be done in a moment. <sighs> yeah. I'm getting paid by the hour, Helen. You take it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the van, van's been refitted. Um, so that it's like a, a doctor's office, I guess. There's a chair and cabinet and stuff, so. That was done by a TRA in Yarmouth that works on ambulances. This is fastened in, this is a medical chair, so they can do blood work and different things in the van with patients. Um, uh, so this is a cabinet with um, basic supplies, right, that they would uh, use. 
and they have a Shabs container in here. Um, and then we put other supplies in the back. Uh, sometimes, like winter time, they would carry gloves, hats, mitts that when they see people in need, they would just have them in the vehicle, right? Mosh does, um, has pregnancy testing kits, tubes for blood work, right? And this would be their, um, when they get blood work, they would put it in here to transport it to the lab, right? So this is on the way to the lab now. The job is so serious out here that you have to be able to laugh at... It's so true. Yeah. The people you work with have the best sense of humor. Like, you laugh. Yeah. yeah. You, so, you know, it's such, a, it's such a hard job. You have to be able to laugh, too. Yeah, or else you'll cry. Yeah. Or else you'll cry. Yeah. It's yeah. always safe. If you don't yeah. laugh, you'll cry all the time. Yeah. I need, um, I need to know just... How do they compare with other nurses? There's no comparison whatsoever. But these people here, it doesn't matter how overwhelmed they are. They don't show it to us. They they take the time to hear what you have to say. They want, you know, they know you're concerned about whatever it is you're talking to them about, and they go out of their way to make sure you get the answers you need. Not the answers you want to hear, but the truth. I was actually clean until about four months ago. I found out about these guys two months ago, and I probably see them about twice a week. Sometimes it can be someone's first time and they can do the tiniest little bit and like it can pretty much create a life forever. Like my, I have a friend that's brain dead from overdosing and I have another friend that like she lost all the nerves in her body. She can't move because it attacked her nervous system. Because so often we talk about harm reduction, about the reduction of, you know, the risk, right? The risk of hep C, the risk of HIV. But what ultimately is, is like building the relationship with that person. I never thought, like, such as IV use. I always looked at people like that and thought that they were totally different people until I did it. And now I just see that it's just regular people who fall down the wrong hole. And I mean, like, I'm new to this. Like, I've only been doing drugs for the last year since I lost my kids. So it's like, yeah, it's like people turn to them for all different reasons, right? And I never thought I'd be in this part, this place, like, of my life, this point of my life. But now I understand why. Every year, Mayline does a party. It's to celebrate the people who are in their lives. They don't stop working, though, cooking up hot dogs at the office and giving out T-shirts. They also have outreach on the road, delivering supplies and telling people about the party. So uh, this run usually starts in the South End, Mark, but we're going to start like in Fairview today. It's good. We have a beautiful day here in Halifax. Yeah. Great day for outreach. Great day for the camera work. So what's going on back at the office today? They're back there celebrating Mainline's 26th anniversary, and all the staff is back there except for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And all we're drinks working. are non-alcohol. Yeah, that's why I left. Isn't that something? Yeah, we that's had to go. That's why I chose to come over here. here. This is not a party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Miller. No. <laughs> it's the newest navigator, Rob uh, Wilson. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Really great guy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Big thing. It's a big thing for that guy, man. It's great. And today, I'm going to kind of try to be a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to keep it on the down level with someone else can to talk. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. But no, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to, uh, I just look forward to a great day with everybody, man. John's Cooking the Winners, I'll be handing out the T-shirts. Uh, Dee will be handing out, uh, other, other staff members will be handing out the, uh, the pastries and stuff. They're the same kind, all the same kind? No, these are chocolate, these are vanilla. And these are chocolate and these are vanilla? Very good. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can't put that in the video. <laughs> you, please do put that in the video. Please put it in the video. 
So what we're gonna do over here, so we're gonna have one of the, one of our guys, Ashton, and he's gonna be handing out the, the drinks, and I'll be handing out the shirts. So, all custom made, man, custom made. Right there, look, 26 years, man, right? That's something to be proud of right there. Something to be proud of. Try to color coordinate, but I, I kind of got the wrong bandana. I don't know if I got the right sneakers to get it to the same colors than they. I'm yeah. gonna maybe run back now and email you. Okay. It's 10 to. Yeah, anywhere there. This year, 2018, we celebrated our 26th year. Uh, of May 1992 um, was when it uh, Mainline first started. Boiling hot dogs over a hot plate. <laughs> you get General John, and he's here, and he puts you there, and then there's Heather, and it's just, yeah. Yeah, we're doing hot dogs together. We're dressing them. Listen, my hair's too long. Anybody could drop in and, and get a hot dog and t-shirt on that day. It's not in strictly like our client base, you know, anyone who comes in, we treat them all the same. Um, my name is Lindell Smith. Uh, my connection to Mainline is, is they've been here pretty much since I've existed, almost. And they've been supporting the community for many, many years. Uh, shout out to, to Chris. Come, come in. The, shout out to Chris. My man, my man. Respect. Love and respect. So always. much love for this guy. Oh, man. Always. Hey, ditto. <laughs> right? Right back at this man. This, this is a good man right here. Yeah. Good soil. Now right? get on my shot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you worked with me, my man? I can't joke now, see? I can't say too long. <laughs> uh, I, this 12 or 13 years. I like the people that work for Mainline. That's what makes it true. I know myself, I don't do nothing just for money. I do it for passion, right? Yeah. And hopefully we all do something. Well, Mark, I'm glad. <laughs> Make money, too. I'm glad you don't work for money. You can give it yours to me today. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> We gotta go to a commercial. <laughs> Red light time. Yeah. I would like um, a couple cups, water, a tie, and if it wasn't for these guys, there'd be a lot of diseases mm -hmm. and a lot a of lot people out risk. there with abscesses. Yes. So I mean, this may look like it's doing harm, but really it's doing great things. And it's, mm -hmm. it's people like me that are in the addiction and not reusing. And so, and if, you know, the stigma, it looks bad, but in the long nice. run, it's saving my life and everybody else's life. Okay, uh, there are some people that really look down on like this kind of kind of situations. But then there are people that know exactly what we do and how we do it. And we're actually here to help people. We're not here to judge people. We're not here to look at people differently. We're here to support them and help them and make sure that they're good. It's amazing. We're, we're referred to on a daily basis as angels, as heroes, right? And we do work that we don't consider work but we enjoy what we do. We enjoy the interaction with the people and our relationships that we've established over the years. We need to have more focus on people who use drugs in the sense that they are everyday people, just like you and I. There is no difference between them. They have pain just like you and I. It's all how we deal with it. Yeah, as long as the resources are there and we can lead them in the right direction, I guess, is the only thing we could do. We're all part of this community and we all need to uh, uh, address it. Even after all this time, I'm even still learning. Like, this, this world is small, really, in perspective, right? To everything. And it's like, I get to share it with the special people of, the, of this world, so I get the blessings all the way around. Yeah, it's deep. 
and get emotional about that because it's real, right? That's how, that's how deep it is. It's real. The main line is great. Like, I, I'm not saying that to kiss any arse. Hey, uh, Trudeau, we need some funding, brother. Um, yeah, no, main line's awesome, man. They, they're, they're, they're there for whatever you need. If they can do it, boy, let me tell you, they're doing it, and they're doing it twice. Not everybody that's homeless uses drugs, um, but I do find that the more people that are homeless and the less help there is in the community, uh, the more chance it is of people being depressed and, uh, and turning to uh, using drugs because uh, they feel lost, they feel alone, and they feel stuck. 26 years. Uh, I know Diane before that. And it's, it's a pretty good organization. You know, she's built it up from what it was to what it is now. And that's a, that, that's a journey in itself, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's a journey in itself.